friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a hyper mature morganian cataract the patient came with normal intraocular pressure usually such cases come with phacolytic glaucoma but this case came a little early intraocular pressure is normal eye is quiet but we can see a uh, homogeneous appearance of the lens mass by this time the main incision and two side ports have been made and now an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber i always use an air bubble to stain the anterior capsule of these white cataract because when we stain the capsule under neat an air bubble the dye required is less the dye is not diluted by the aqueous and the staining is very quick the dye is then washed out with vss and then 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is used to fill up the anterior chamber the visco is also applied over the corneal epithelium for better visibility and now is the time to do capsulorexis see what happens as soon as the anterior capsule is incised milky fluid comes out and we can aspirate this milky fluid the punctured site doesn't go into argentine flag sign in hypermature morganian cataracts because as soon as the milky fluid comes out the intralenticular pressure reduces drastically and the punctured site doesn't extend to periphery and now visco is again injected and then a uh, ureta forces is used to do spiral rexis started with a small turn and now go to periphery to make an adequate sized rexis as i pull the capsule i can make out that the jonule is strong in this case there is no jonular weakness and this has been a very nice very satisfactory rexis visco is again injected and now is the time to introduce the phaco needle now this nucleus is free floating it is very difficult to bury the tip of the phaco needle with bevel off so i go into the substance of the nucleus bevel down and make a tunnel and now i remove use reflux and come out now i turn the handpiece make the bevel up because i find it easier to divide the nucleus with bevel up and now this is a nice crack but the nuclear the lens fibers are very much leathery this is another chop and a fragment is almost free this is another chop and then this is on more chop this nuclear fragment is free and this is the endonucleus 
first I remove the endonucleus then I remove this free nuclear fragment the machine being used is Faro's from Oatley Switzerland and ultrasonic energy used is 80 percent in this case flow rate is 45 ml per minute vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury now in this case all these fragments are joined to each other by a leathery posterior plate so I have to separate these fragments I have to make these fragments free and then I will try to emulsify each fragment this is the blunt chopper it's like a Sinsky hook it goes I tried to go behind the nuclear piece but I could not come out inject some more visco push the posterior capsule far behind and now I go again with the chopper and the Sinsky hook my plan is to separate these fragments from each other you can see the band joining these fragments this is the band I went behind the leathery fibers hooked the leathery fibers and over that I pressed with the Sinsky hook with the shaft of the Sinsky hook and separated the pieces now I inject visco again the pieces have actually come forward so I have to hold the nuclear pieces and holding them I have to go back to the iris plane so as I hold it I go back to iris plane and emulsify the fragments but this free fragment was actually rubbing the corneal endothelium and this should not occur however this case I have seen in the post operative period the patient was doing well there was mild central corneal edema otherwise the patient did very well this is the last nuclear fragment at this time we must be very careful in all cases where there is no epinuclear cushion to protect the posterior capsule another way in such cases is to implant the intraocular lens first particularly in those cases with weak genule where the posterior capsule tends to come forward very frequently but in this case it was not like that the genule was okay and the posterior capsule is far behind all the time in such cases we can decrease the vacuum and emulsify the last portion of the last nuclear piece and very slowly we can emulsify the last nuclear piece and it is done so the nucleus is managed and now cortical cleanup is to be done there is some cortex some cells actually in the periphery and very little cortex is also there so I am using this 23 gauze Simco to remove these cortex cortex from 
one o'clock to four o'clock has been removed and this is polishing of the peripheral area of the posterior capsule and this is cleaning of the under surface of the anterior capsular rim go through the left side port and polish the peripheral part of the capsule from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock and now is the time to implant an intraocular lens in this case I am going to use visco to implant the intraocular lens 2% ASPMC has been used to fill up the anterior chamber as well as the posterior as well as the capsular bag and now this is a hydrophobic single piece monofocal intraocular lens being placed in the capsular bag and now the intraocular lens is rotated and then the visco is nicely cleaned using Simco as well as bimanual irrigation aspiration the capsular bag is also irrigated very thoroughly the anti chamber is irrigated and then irrigation and aspiration is used together to clean the visco from the anterior chamber we can see that the anterior capsular rim is overlapping the optic of the intraocular lens so this is an ideal axis. Moxie has been injected into the anterior chamber. The side ports are closed, hydrating corneal stroma on either side of these stab incisions. And finally, this is the anterior chamber lavage. Some air bubbles are there with Simco I couldn't remove the air bubbles so I asked for the irrigating probe of bimanual IA and it was used to drive out the air bubbles and now the anterior chamber is to be formed very nicely the intraocular pressure should be a little towards the higher side and the case is concluded the integrity of the wounds are checked and the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in managing your cases with hypermature Morganian cataracts. Always remember that you cannot engage the phaco needle with bevel up because the nucleus is free floating. We have to engage the phaco needle with bevel down, make a tunnel and then we can use the Fake on a deal with its bevel up.